Welcome to another Issues and Solutions video about new machine setup guidance. First we have camera settling and this is about using adaptive camera settling method. It will try to set a suitable camera settling method for your computer automatically. For doing so it performs a settling a test pattern slightly moving around the camera. It has detected a suitable method motion. This is because the compute time was reasonable at 17 milliseconds per frame, but it has detected a huge settle time. I have deliberately set my light placer to really perform shaky moves. And it tries to guess why. It says the settle time might be large because of vibrations and what I should do about it. We'll come back to that. For more information we can go to the camera settling tab of the camera and let's do that. It has recorded the settling images and as you can see it is really shaking around that computer image so it takes a very long time to abate the vibrations. So again it proposes setting stricter acceleration or jerk limits for our X and Y axis, so let's do that. Obviously I have already prepared the known good values here. For your machine you would have to tune them accordingly. Just as a reminder, let's go to the driver, because in order to be able to use jerk limits, we have to set it to simulated third order control or better if your controller supports it. So now let's try again. Again uh, perform this test and we see we have a mere 100 milliseconds settling time now. Let's have a look again and we see there is hardly any motion remaining in the camera images. So very quick settling time. Obviously your move will take a bit longer, but the settling time will be much shorter and more, more importantly it will be much more precise. Let's do the same on the bottom camera and we get 60 milliseconds this time. And again let's look at the images and see there is really only minimal motion remaining. The next thing is manual nozzle tip loading. For uh, the setup we sometimes need to load a nozzle tip and this at least sets the manual loading location so you can do so if prompted by issues and solutions. Just jog to a suitable location where you can easily reach the nozzle and exchange the nozzle tip manually. I symbolically do that here and then if the right uh, location is selected just accept the solution. Next is nozzle tip calibration. This is about the runout compensation and uh, offset compensation, precise camera offset compensation, and we can automatically load the nozzle tip. Then center the nozzle. And if you like, you can try to auto adjust for the right nozzle diameter. But as you will see in this case it takes the wrong feature. This, this is up in Z and we don't want that. We want the lowest point in Z so what we want is the inside bore of the nozzle tip. And I have to do it manually. We go a bit over the edge and then back until it really hugs to it right. Just right. Press accept. The calibration is done and we have set it up. This will be proposed for every nozzle tip in your system as soon as you create them. The next step would to be to, su uh, to suggest background calibration because I have a black CP40 nozzle tips. I use brightness and it now tells me my background elements are too bright and it indicates it with pink highlights. So this is a bit scraped off and too bright. Uh, again, I have more information on the nozzle tip. Here you see that this brightness goes up to 142, which is too high. Again, I can press show problems to highlight the spots. But what I really need to do is to blacken this nozzle tip. So let's posi position it over the camera. 
and then use my dried up marker to try and blacken it you should really do it in a better way this is just to showcase how this works so I blackened it a bit so I can reopen the issue and try again and this time it has seen the background elements are sufficiently dark so that's it for this time Cheerio.